So this video features five tips on how to remove awkward silences from meetings. Now, I've actually been postponing this video for a while now. I guess I was never happy with the format. So I figured I may as well just do it and just cut straight to the chase, like lay out all the information. Hopefully it will make sense. Uh, if not, I'm happy to expand on it in the comment section or maybe if you like it, I'm going to do a second video with a few more tips and tricks that I've been using in my meetings. By the way, before I do this, just want to make sure that you don't waste your time on this video. If you work in a setting where you have online meetings, most of these uh, can easily apply to you. If you don't, you may as well just skip this video. Let's start with Mentimeter.com. I'm not sponsored by the way by Mentimeter, but it's one of those tools or websites that I keep going to, I keep using. So if I like it, I'm just gonna recommend it. You can easily create a free account. And I think you get up to two slides as of today, but you're only gonna need one. Uh, what you can do is select, for example, multiple choice, which is a good go-to for me at least and you just create a poll, like you, you create a voting poll and you can go for whatever the group is into. I usually go for movies and you can even go for the classics. And then at the beginning of the call, you just set up a menti poll and let's say you ask, which is the better movie, Shawshank Redemption or The Godfather? And you may have opinions, you may have people starting to debate stuff, which pretty much fills a void that's at the beginning of that meeting. Another thing that this actually does is it spikes the dopamine a bit, makes people feel more included. Number two, ask the participants at the beginning of the meeting to mention one unexpected thing that they learned in the past week. This is a super simple method just to kind of start the meeting with an upbeat. Like people will remember good things and they will remember good experiments that they've done. This is actually one way of helping people think outside the box straight off the bat. Moving on to number three, this is actually going to be super fast. If this is a recurring meeting, I like to use Miro for this one. In Miro, I, I set up 10 questions general knowledge, whatever you want to do, like whatever the group is mostly into. I've done a lot of quizzes in the past, so. That's kind of my go-to area. At the beginning of the call, I just ask each of the participants to pick one question. If they answer it correctly, I give them one point. At the end of the week or at the end of the month, ho however you want to do it, sum up all of the points and then there's a winner. For that winner, you can even like give them a diploma or whatever way you want to turn this into a friendly competition. Number four is... A bit more funny, hopefully. It will end up being funny at least. So you explain to the group that you're going to go one by one through each member. Well, you'll go through as many as you can really because if it's a big meeting, you won't be able to. But let's say you're going to the first person and you're going to ask them to assign themselves a superpower. And then the person after them is going to specify under which circumstances that superpower is activated. For example, person number one is going to say able to turn invisible. And then person number two is going to say, yeah, but that only happens when you're crying. This game continues with person number two then saying, all right, I want to be able to fly. And then person number three will say, yes, but that's only activated when you're singing your national anthem. Hopefully this creates a, a lot of humorous situations. Maybe you'll see a bit of creativity. Maybe you'll even see some, some foul language. But in my past, uh, this, this actually turned out to be one of the funniest games that we've done. Number five. Uh, this is actually called one word goal. And now this is on, a bit on the serious side. You ask each participant to describe the goal of the meeting in one word. What do they want to achieve? This is actually a concise way to establish alignment straight off the bat. You may find themes. You may find that people want to perhaps discover the roadmap or they want to look at something specific or they want to, maybe they don't really want to have that meeting. Either way, that one word goal, that truth is what the meeting is going to end up being about eventually. This was it. If you have any anything that you want me to expand on, please 
ask me in the comment section and I'll try to answer them. And if you want to do like a part two, I've got a few more that I'm happy to share. Thank you for sticking around.